A few videos back, I unboxed the MSI RTX 2070 Gaming Z, a behemoth of a graphics card that looked really promising, at least outwardly. Well, now I've gotten the chance to spend some time with it, put it through its paces, and now I'm here to share with you my impressions on using this graphics card in my Ryzen 5 based system. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So first things first, addressing the size of the graphics card. I actually am glad that they included this bracket with the graphics card, as it does actually do a really good job of straightening it out. Matter of fact, um, you guys should be looking at some footage right now of the sag without the bar installed, and then what the bar does to correct that sag. Admittedly, in my, in my specific scenario, I didn't have a lot of sag with this GPU, and while the bar did straighten it out, the bar was then visually sagging. That's gonna be one of those things where you're either fine with the bar being a little uneven or your graphics card just having proper support. Also, your mileage may vary as this may have been a byproduct of the case that I'm using and the fastening hardware for the PCI exp uh, expansion slots. Now, as far as looks are concerned, the RGB lighting on this graphics card looks dynamite. Unfortunately, if you ha unless you have a way of mounting this card vertically, you're not gonna see all of it. It still looks really nice though, and in spite of me having it just in a plain blue configuration for the sake of matching my build, MSI's Mystic Light software actually has a lot of really neat options for you to really customize the look and feel of this graphics card to your liking. It also gives you the opportunity to do different things with the two different lighting zones on this graphics card. So you can have the MSI Twin Frozer 7 logo on the side and the underglow doing different things at different times. Now, as far as noise is concerned, not really certain if you guys can hear my rig operating behind me, but between the Antec fans that I'm using, plus the fans on this Twin Frozer heatsink, this card remains fairly inaudible, up to about 1600 RPM fan speed, at which point then you, it does become a bit noticeable, but it's never anything that's super jarring unless you have this thing slammed to 100% fan speed. Now that being said, even without allowing the fan to ramp up much past maybe 65% or so, this GPU never got hotter than 72C, and that's in an Antec P8, which is already a really enclosed case and is kind of starred for air to begin with, even with the modification that I did to the front panel to help it breathe a little bit better. Now so far, she's got the looks, and she's got the cooling potential. Now let's see what the performance was like with this graphics card. So before we dive into the performance benchmarks, I wanna really quickly touch on the system specs. I'm not gonna go over all of them in the video, but they are listed down in the video description along with all of the settings that were used for the games and synthetic benchmarks that were used to test this graphics card. Also, take some of these performance numbers with a bit of a grain of salt here. Remember, this is a Ryzen platform that I'm using, so this isn't necessarily the strongest gaming CPU ever. And as we'll see for one of the benchmarking results, that could possibly have even affected some of my testing results. So as always, your individual mileage can and will vary based on the configuration that your rig's running. All right, guys, so let's go over the benchmarks, starting with the synthetics here. Uh, as you can see, I ran Superposition, Time Spy, Port Royal, and Firestrike Extreme. Again, all of the settings are down in the video description, and bear in mind, these are only the graphics scores. I did not include the CPU scores or the uh, total combined score because the focus here is gonna be on the GPU. Also, as I don't have really any other modern graphics cards to test this against, this is sort of gonna be just a comparison of stock versus overclock settings for both synthetics and gaming. Now, as we can see here, for all the benchmarks that we have done for synthetics, we have some pretty healthy GPU scores here, and we see on average roughly 7% scaling as we move up from the stock settings to the overclock settings. Obviously, these aren't gonna be world record-breaking numbers, but no one's expecting an RTX 2070 to break any world records except within its own GPU class anyway. Moving over to the gaming benchmarks, we can see that uh, there were two 
sort of extreme outliers, and one of them even had a little bit of an anomaly going on with them. So we'll start from the top down. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was probably the most taxing title for me to test with this GPU, and part of that likely had something to do with this game probably being a little bit more CPU bound than the other titles that I was testing, which uh, was probably being limited by the use of a Ryzen 5 2600 CPU here. Even still, at 1440p, this graphics card performed admirably with everything turned up, and I would imagine that you would only need to turn down a couple of the texture filters, and you'd probably be getting 60 FPS average at 1440p all day. Metro Last Light also saw damn near 60 FPS, regardless of whether it was in stock or overclock configurations, with decent 1% and 0.1% lows as well. The overclock definitely helped smooth things out a little bit, and again, if you turn down one or two of the textures, you'll probably get way north of 60 FPS on this title and have a buttery smooth experience. GTA 5 is one of the older titles that I tested here, but even with everything cranked all the way up, and even in spite of a Ryzen CPU being used here, we still saw essentially 70 FPS, uh, regardless of whether we were in stock or overclock settings. Doom was sort of an anomaly here. I'm not really sure what was going on, but regardless of whether or not I had an overclock applied, my frame rates did not change, and I reran these tests probably six times just to verify that. It's possible I ran into a CPU bottleneck here, or there may have been something else strange going on either with Doom or MSI Afterburner. I may go back and revisit this test at some point later on down the line, but for right now, know that regardless of whether or not you choose to overclock this card, Doom will be an exceptionally smooth experience, with 0.1% lows even trouncing all the rest of the average FPS numbers for all the other titles tested here. So there we have it, we've gone over the performance benchmarks, the card stays cool, it looks good, it's a 1440p animal, even with all of the settings cranked up to damn near max settings, if not actual max settings, in a pretty wide variety of titles. And that's even considering this card's currently sort of being hamstrung by a Ryzen 5 2600. Granted, not all titles are going to be hamstrung as a result of this processor, and even if they are, I'm still really pleased with the performance I'm getting out of it. The question comes into play then, is this graphics card worth its $600 MSRP? If you're comparing something like this to, say, a Founders Edition graphics card, you're getting an equivalent or better VRM. You're getting the same binned GPU core that's capable of sustaining higher boost clocks and potentially actually clocking higher. You've actually got amazing memory overclocking on this graphics card, and you've got a heatsink that while it is dimensionally larger than the Founders Edition graphics card, it's gonna keep your graphics card cooler as a result. And with the bigger fans, it's also gonna keep it way quieter. So for me personally, if it was the choice between the MSI RTX 2070 Gaming Z and a Founders Edition SKU, outside of water cooling uh, availability for components, I'm probably gonna go with the Gaming Z SKU. But sound off in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys think of the RTX 2070 Gaming Z here. Does this tick all the boxes for you or are you looking for something a little bit different with your graphics card? Also, toss a thumbs up on the video if you like what you saw. Get subscribed for more content coming at you sooner rather than later. And I'll catch you guys next time. Take it easy.